So I'll go ahead and start with my talk. So I'm going to talk about the importance of open source software and tools in cybersecurity. Uh, but before that, a quick introduction. So I have been a prominent user and a big fan of open source in general in software com uh, in cybersecurity community. My first interaction with an open source software was when I first joined my first job as a security engineer back in University of Delaware. And I was tasked to uh, bring up a cluster that would run the Zeek software on it. And I will be talking more about what Zeek is and how it is used. But very briefly, I'm not going to focus this talk on highly technical and going into the details of how it runs, but just giving you an experience and a, a walkthrough of what different kind of tools are available out there and how you can take advantage of that. So I have been using open source, open source software for uh, more than six or seven years now. And uh, I have a broad experience on other different tools available aside Seek and Suricata that are the two important tools that we currently use in production at Berkeley Lab as well as in my previous job. So I'll be talking more about those two tools specifically, but then I'll, pre I'll give you a list of other tools as well that you might be interested in. Uh, other than that, I have been working in cybersecurity since nine years. And uh, I have been really passionate about this industry because there is no single day in my work that I'm not excited about working on new things that I uh, can learn and I can uh, contribute back. So it's like a give and take. So in open source, it's very important that if you, even if you are a user, if you can give back to the community in any way, shape or form, then that is not only valuable to yourself, but also valuable to the community because it keeps the community green and fresh, right? So like new blood coming in and circulating in the community. We will talk more about how, how that uh, happens and how it is important even for an individual to, to be involved in some way, shape or form in any of the open source software and how it can enhance the career actually. So, um, and, and lastly, I'm also a part-time PhD student. So I started my PhD, uh, part-time PhD back in 2015 at University of Delaware, and I'm still continuing it as a uh, my, my passion, my PhD, and my, my PhD topics are more, more focused on the security and privacy of data using DNS. And uh, it, my research topic revolves a lot around uh, the DNS protocol security in general. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to finish it in next um, next couple of years. I'm, I'm shooting for two years now. It's been a long time now, so I should graduate. Um, so what's open source software? So I think as the name suggests, you guys must have, if you guys are working uh, in any industry, you guys must have come across a, an open source software that you are really using. And whether you're aware of it or not, but that's that's other thing. But there are so many important projects out there that actually powers not only the data centers, but also the servers that you run. So at the bottom, I have provided a list of very few of the very famous projects. It was hard because I was looking for some really good um, top uh, open source projects. And there was there is a list. So it was hard to pick few of them, but I have picked the ones that you guys might have interacted with in your careers at any point and at, 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 at some point, because the first one is the Linux, right? So if you are running a server, even people run your Linux on desktops. So that is the very popular popular open source project that, that you might have come across. But anyways, I'm not going to go into the details of what these open source products are or projects are. I just wanted to give you an impression of these are what some of the important projects that actually powers your browser and your operating system and your um, your uh, development environment in your in, in your uh, in your Java or whatever coding language you use. GNU is like the support that uh, that provides Linux as a whole operating system. It provides a lot of uh, different softwares and uh, projects that revolve around Linux. So it's kind of like a package system for compact compacting Linux in a very uh, useful manner. And so uh, coming to the definition, so the proper definition of open source software is it refers to the products or the applications that anyone can use, uh, share, and uh, even contribute back to because the files of the projects are available on the public platform. So maybe GitHub is hosting some projects code. So if you are uh, if you are more involved in the project and if you like kind of like find bugs or if you just are interested to know how the project runs, you can actually get into the details of how it runs uh, by going to the source code directly. Like you can pull it down and see what people have written. So it has a broad community as well that contributes back to the project. So that's another beauty of the project that there is no single person 
who is authoritative or the owner of the project. It's like a, it's like a community project or a community product for, for the community from the community. So it's free, open source, and uh, there are a lot of good uh, open source projects available out there that you might not even know you're using it, but you know when you will pay attention, you will know that where did it come from? So um, you can do that exercise uh, after this talk that what all open source softwares you guys are using and how, how useful and important it is in your day-to-day uh, day -day life uh, in your job. So this slide specifically shows the uh, the open source tools and projects available specifically in the cybersecurity area. I have classified five categories here. There are a lot of tools. Again, this is a very terse list. And I was like, I was, it is, it was hard to pick because I only picked the tools that I have experience with, but there are so many different tools out there and they're all good. Um, so this is a very terse list again. So this is not uh, a very uh, like exhaustive li list, but it's very limited. So if you want to just start with, okay, I don't have any money and I want to see how I can build my security stack or even just for fun, right? Like if you just want to learn in general that what kind of intrusion detection and prevention systems are out there, you can play around with these tools because they are free, right? You can just pull it down on your system and try to look into it and you know the functionality of the tool. So anyways, the source of this uh, slide is a blog post written by Bozo. I have uh, in the, on the, at the bottom of the slide, I have the source. So you can go to that, uh, that list to check out the, the exhaustive list of the um, open source software specifically using security. So these are the five important um, important the categories that I believe uh, I have used tools in. So the first one is the security monitoring and intrusion detection. The first three, Snort, Srikar, and Zeek, if you have been around in the security industry, you must have heard of them in any way, shape, or form, because not only they're open source and free, but also there are a lot of commercial products that are spin-off or have a secret sauce based on the detection techniques provided by these tools. So the first one is Surikara. It's an, again, a signature-based, very, very valuable, very well-known intrusion detection system. Snort is kind of like Surikara, but uh, the developers are different and the communities that support both, of our, both the projects are different. Uh, Zeek is, uh, again, one of the very most popular network security monitoring tools that I have used and I have come across. And I'll talk more about Zeek and Surikara specifically in the next few slides, just to give you uh, an impression of what these tools can do. And then OSEC is the host based intrusion detection system. So if you have log files generated by your host, like this is log files and you are not collecting them uh, on a central location. I mean, as a security engineer, you don't have that access. Then you can run OSEC with rules to identify different things or attackers or attempts in login attempts to your system based on the detection rules provided by OSSEC. And then you can fine tune it based on the host that you're running it on. Uh, security Onion, again, Doug Burks, a uh, great guy. Uh, he has written uh, Security Onion as a product that is like a defender's suite, uh, defender's tool suite for cybersecurity. So if you guys are familiar with Kali Linux, so Kali is more on the pen testing side. It has all the exploits and uh, tools available for doing recon and pen testing. So Security Onion is quite opposite of it. So it is, a, it is a platform and it's a tool suite for the defenders only. So all the tools that you can expect or most of the tools that you can expect to run as a defender or a blue hat team guy, you can run Security Onion and it is out of the box will provide you all provide you with all those tools. You don't have to explicitly download each, each one of them. It's just like uh, all in one uh, for Security Onion. Threat Intel MISP is another great platform. They share the IOCs, which are in the, uh, indicators of compromise. So anytime an exploit happens or a ransomware attack happens or any kind of attack happens, uh, the IP addresses that are bad or the IP addresses that are seen attacking the systems, they are called IOCs, indicator of compromise. And not only IPs, there are different categories of indicators of compromises. Like there are hashes of bad files or malicious files. There are IP addresses. There are um, uh, there are different kind of signatures that are available out there to detect different kind of things. These are all categorized as indicator of con com indicators of compromise. We are we call it with an acronym called IOC. And if there are platforms out there who are sharing that information, you want to make use of it, right? Because you cannot just go and mine that kind of information by yourself. You can do it, but it will take time. But if somebody's just providing you that, you just want to use that. So MISP is another great platform that does that for free. Like you just. Uh, go create an account and start pulling down the feeds that they have on the bad uh, actors or the malicious uh, act actors and adversaries. Uh, PCAP analysis, again, very important um, 
I feel like I use Wireshark and T-Shark so often because all, most of the time I deal with PCAPs and packets. So you guys might have come across Wireshark T-Shark. Again, they're open source. So you can go ahead and see what they have done uh, to do the detection of PCAP. And you can build your own tools because the code is right out there, right? Uh, they're all, again, protected by some licensing. So make sure that you follow that as well. So um, Yara, again, uh, it's an antivirus and endpoint protection tool. It is a pattern matcher. So if you have an ability to extract files out of your network, and if you want to do the file analysis, like for example, you are you are extracting all the executables out of your network and you want to see whether an executable is bad or good, you can create Yara rules for that. And Yara comes with some rules uh, already built in to detect most common uh, types of bad files and malicious or malware uh, embedded files. So that's again, a great antivirus op so so open source free tool that you can use. And lastly, vulnerability assessment. This is uh, a category where you scan your network for vulnerabilities, right, proactively. So OpenVAS and Zap Proxy are, again, two very famous uh, vulnerability assessment tools that you can take use of uh, straight up from the open source um, community out there. They have written amazing kind of tools. So this is like a very terse list of uh, things and tools that are available out there. And if you're interested in any one of those categories, you can start playing around with it. Again, so I'm just going to give you a little bit more background on what ZK is and Suricata is, and then I will just uh, deep dive into the importance of the open source software. So what is Zeek? Again, Zeek is a network security monitoring tool. It comes with more than 50 kind of protocol parsers. And what it does, it what it does is it just sits on your network. It just sniffs your traffic or you feed traffic or you feed packets to a sensor that is running Zeek. It will see the packets, they are all, they are all the PCAP packets, right? Um, so, and then it will generate different kind of log files, like the high fidelity log files, which are ASCII flat file. You can ingest it in in, in your seam solution, or you can just do an like um, command like kung fu on those uh, log files. So, so it's very it's very um, uh, high fidelity logs. So you can actually give you are getting an, a holistic view of your network on the on the log files that Zeek is generating. So it gives you like a visibility of what's transpiring on your network and how you can, uh, whether this traffic you are seeing or whether this protocol traffic you are seeing is actually uh, acceptable on your network or you should see or you should not see. Other than the protocol uh, analyzer part, it comes with its in uh, in built-in um, detections for weird and anomalous behaviors of the packets. So it not only generates the protocol log files, like if it has seen HTTP packets on your uh, on your network, it will generate HTTP.log file. It has seen, if it has seen DNS traffic on your network, it will generate a DNS.log file for you. So not only those files are generated, but also there are so many good files that it generates out of the box, like there is a notice.log file. So it has some uh, detection scripts built in to detect some kind of attacks, the basic kind of attacks like scanning. If somebody is scanning your if somebody is scanning your network, it is going to create a log, a log, and then put it into the log file called notice.log file. So you can enable and disable some of the detections it already comes with. So it's a it's a great, very versatile tool. And um, again, why you would use uh, Zeek on your network? So um, it, it again it gives a holistic view of your network. So as a defender, we we have a saying that you can't protect what you can't see. So the visibility is the great aspect of doing the, um, the, the better and enhanced detection and uh, threat hunting on your network. So if you have visibility, then you, that's, that, then you are golden. So Zeek gives you that visibility out of your traffic. So if you're running Zeek, it will just produce all these log files based on what, is, what it is seeing on your network. And then you can analyze those log files and uh, see what you are seeing on your network. So uh, it's much different than a typical idea system. Again, it is not a signature based intrusion detection system, it is a network security monitoring tool. That means it is just going to sit on the network, watch your traffic and produce log files for you. There are more than 200 uh, community written uh, detection scripts that are available out there that you can take advantage of. And those scripts will actually detect things on your network based on uh, whether you are seeing the traffic or not. So I'm going to talk about that as well. So one of the coolest feature, again, flat log files. Like if you have, if you have ever dealt with packets, you can't read them just like doing a grep or less on the packet. You need a tool like PCAP analysis tool that I talked about, T-Shark or Wireshark, right? To, to open that PCAP up. And again, when you open that PCAP up, there, it's like all jumbled packets out there, like all different protocols you can see in, in just one file. 
But what Zeek does is it, it not only creates flat, flat log files for you to look at, but also it segregates the file based on the protocol. So DNS traffic will be in the DNS.log file, HTTP traffic will be in HTTP.log uh, HTTP file, and SMTP traffic will be again SMTP.log file. So if you're looking for a specific connection and if you know what application you are looking at, you can directly go to that log file and see whether you see that connection there or not. So that's the one of the biggest feature of Zeek that it is like it produces high fidelity um, enriched logs. Again, it's open source free. The, the code is available on GitHub. You can go and see uh, how the code is written, who are the contributors. And if you want to contribute a protocol analyzer, you can, you can do that as well. Um, so these are some numbers. Uh, 60 plus log files are generated by default out of the box. There are more than 3,000 underlying uh, network events that are tracked. I'm not going to go into the details, but they are just like, just to give you a background of how popular Zeek is and how many institutions and organizations are using that. So 10,000 plus deployments worldwide, and that includes production, that includes the production deployments as well. Uh, GitHub starts, again, the Zeek code is available on GitHub, and a lot of people are, um, you know, following it and then uh, are kind of like using it. So 4,000 stars there. Again, Warren Paxson was the guy who is the creator of Zeek. Uh, that back then it was called Bro, and he wrote the first line of code back in 1992. And that was out of the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So again, 20 plus years of um, R&D has gone into it to to produce Zeek and where it is right now. And um, again, 200 plus community contributed packages. So the con community contributed packages are the scripts that community has written for different kind of detections. So out of the box, you can see that there are 200 plus kind of detections available uh, for Zeek if you're running it. And lastly, uh, recently last month, Microsoft announced the um, Zeek integration in their products, uh, Microsoft Defender and uh, Windows, Microsoft Windows. So that's another uh, very big collaboration uh, that Microsoft is now uh, powered by Zeek on their products as well. So what is Suricata? Again, Suricata is a lot different than Zeek. A lot of times I get a question that if I'm running Zeek, should, should I run Suricata? Or if I'm running Suricata, should I run Zeek? They both complement each other. They are apples and oranges, so you can't compare them. Signature-based idea systems are different. Uh, and Suricata is based off of signature-based idea systems. So there are a lot of signatures that Suricata comes with. And now this uh, software generates alerts. So you will have an alert.log file where you can see different kind of alerts that are generated based on the signatures that Suricata provides. Um, again, you can also have a PCAP recordings. You can extract files and you can do the uh, uh, you can do the net flows as well with Suricata. So that's again like a very one of the very uh, popular uh, idea systems I have worked with. So why use Suricata? Again, it's a signature based, very powerful signature based detection system it's an open source tool and software so why not and it has more than 70k um 70000 rule sets so people have written almost 70000 rules for just uh, signature based detection and you can totally take use of it okay so now i'm going to talk about the cost of running um open source open source software os here indicates open source not operating system so i should just make make that clear um so now I have said so many things about, okay, it's great. It's open source. So open source free for community. And then it has great community support. Uh, a lot of developers are like contributing back to the project. So what is the actual cost of running open source? So in production, what happens is software is always free. So you can get the code from the GitHub or wherever this, the code of the tool is hosted, but you have to run it somewhere, right? So uh, just a reality picture that, uh, Software is free, but you have to buy hardware support for of course, because you know you can't just run software in. I mean, you can run software in cloud, but again, you have to pay for cloud. So, uh, so for on-prem deployments, you will have different servers, and uh, you have to, you have to set up taps on your network where you are going to tap the traffic and then feed that traffic to your open source tool based on your use case, and then load balancers, right? Like if you have a big production system, just like we have one in Berkeley, we have like a network-based load balancing solution that actually balances the network traffic that we are consuming out of our optical taps to different operating, uh, to different uh, open source software on the back end that we run in cluster mode. So we have like hardware to support that. So that's the actual cost of running uh, open source software. Not only that, but also engineers time and resources. So a lot of times when we think about cost, we only think about things that we buy or the products that we purchase, but we, we always forget that you are paying your engineers to work on a project in your company. So that you should also, also, also account for that 
engineers time and resources and the and the learning curve also pay also contributes to the cost of the open source software some softwares you just you just read about it for one hour on the internet and you're good to go you are you, you think you're capable of running it but for some softwares it takes days and months of training to actually get trained how to use it so that's again kind of like contributes back to the cost of um, running an open source software uh, and then rest is plug and play again there is a great community support once you have the hardware set up or if you want to run it on prem on cloud once you have that set up then it's just plug and play. You just download the software, install it, run it, and then just um, reap the benefits out of it. Okay, so finally, the importance of open source software. So a lot of times, uh, so how you you have seen in the previous slide that how prominent it is uh, that there are so many products. I mean, in general, there are so many project, projects and products that are open source that has empowered the um, the data centers and the servers in general or in, in general the, the community. But specifically in cybersecurity, there are so many tools out there that are great. Uh, they are they are they are great. And then you can just you can just take them and use them. So for, for a, a big a big um hurdle in some of the uh, education or academia industries or even the um small small sector industries is money, right? Like you have to justify the cost of running uh, the tools in your environment and a lot of times in cybersecurity, since it's such a such a booming field these are expensive tools so like if you go in the commercial market and if you want to pay for us pay for an idea system or pay for a firewall it will cost you a lot of money so it's hard to kind of like get that money and sometimes justify it when you're running in a small scale uh, business or small sector industry then it's a soft Open source software is your way to go because they, I have I have already shown you the five, five different categories and you can choose the tools that you want to uh, implement in your network and then just productionize it. So for the education academia industry specifically where there is shortage of funds in general, open source software is way to go. And um, I, I, we have been running uh, Zeek and Surikara. They are both open source free softwares in production for a while now. And there are a lot of big academia industries academia as well as industry sectors that actually run open source uh, software on their uh, on their production environment especially especially for your for their cybersecurity um team so uh, again build your own uh, security stack so it's not only like just one sec one category you can run in uh, run uh, a tool from but you can build a stack like if you want a firewall you can run pfsense because it's an open source and free if you run if you want an idea system you can have your Zeek or Surikata sensor set up. If you have to uh, run these scanners, if you want to do vulnerability, vulnerability assessment, you can run OpenVAS. So you can build your own security stack based on all these open source tools without any software uh, implication cost to, to yourself and your organization. You only have to support hardware for it. So you can all, already build your um, software stack based on the uh, open source security tools available out there. Uh, open source is a hard. Again, there are some of the some of the very big uh, commercial products and pro commercial companies that are actually powered by open source. So there are a lot of um, products that at the back end uses Zeek and Suricata for their uh, ingestion of traffic and doing anomaly detection and whatnot. And they have built on top of uh, what Zeek and Suricata can do. So you can see how important those open source tools already are because there are so many commercial products that are spun out of those um, those open source software. And uh, and almost and as, as I mentioned, that open source software is available in every security category almost. Uh, and then you you can just uh, make use of it. So again, that was just like if you are limited on your funds, then you can use open source as your um, software stack that you can actually run in production without any problem, and then just uh, just just uh, just go go with it. But as a career catapult as well, right? Like so, if you so that this is the and a very important aspect of open source as well. So if you are running an open source uh, product or if you are involved in open source product or a project, then uh, it can actually transform your career. Like because if you will, uh, you will build in, you will build social connections. You will uh, have this uh, this great uh, community of the uh, developers as well as users who would now know you that okay you are a user and active contributor to this project so you will not only build your network with all these people but also you will have your recognition in the industry and cybersecurity is a very small industry that if somebody knows you then 
I mean, you know, you you get your way once you, when you start making these connections. So it's a great place to uh, to uh, bring some some visibility to yourself and to recognition, some bring some recognition to yourself and then be known in the industry. So it is going to going to impact your career as well. So like next time, if you are looking for a good opportunity and if you just want to go ahead and pursue something in that open source um, project, then you can do so. So it can be your like um, career catapult, right? It can it can boost your career in, in so many different aspects. And again, you you might meet somebody in the open source project who is like super smart, and that, that that guy or girl can be your mentor, and he can actually guide you. And if you have any questions, then you can you have one of the smart uh smart people now. You can you know about that. You can go to and ask any questions you have. So the takeaway finally from this uh from this presentation is if you haven't already taken a look at the open what open source softwares and tools available out there, especially in cybersecurity. You might want to check it out because cybersecurity in general now is a practice that every industry is involved with, whether you are banking, finance, uh, education, academia, whatnot. Like if you if you're running a business, you just have to include cybersecurity by default in it. So it's not like that. Okay, only uh, computer system engineers or tech guys are uh, focused on security. Security is something that is everybody's responsibility. And uh, if you are like this at a small scale, then where you don't have a lot of funds and where, where you are very limited with funds, then you you should absolutely take a look at how you can take advantage of all these open source projects and tools available out there, especially in cybersecurity. And again, once you join the uh, open source community, support it and uh, be a user contributor. And then it can it itself has its it's so many benefits out of um, out of the box. And again, it's a great way to enhance your uh, your career, your network. And then uh, once you get involved, then you know people, and you can be like you know um, you you can you can now show show off your skills that oh I have contributed to this open source big pop, really popular open source project and now I'm a contributor and now I, I know these developers who have actually written uh, GNU packages or Linux kernel I know them so you can kind of like brag about that as well so um so those were the key takeaways uh, key takeaways from this presentation